Hi everyone, it's Ardeth, and I'm back with this month's Innovations with Ardeth feature on the Ellen Hudson blog and YouTube channel. This month, I used my imagination and some of the latest Essentials by Ellen goodies to create a fun, interactive Christmas card. I'm starting with my background, which will be an ink-blended night sky. But before that, I'm going to emboss my sentiment for a resist technique. So I used my anti-static pouch over the area before inking up the stamp. I chose a fairly large sentiment from the retro holiday greetings. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And I used my mini misty and wow embossing ink to ink it up. This ink is sticky and it stays wet for a long time, so the embossing powder will stick to it. I usually ink up my stamps two times just to be really sure I'm getting a good impression. I'm using clear embossing powder this time. It will show white once I've blended the ink over it. But you could use white powder either before or after the blending, so there are different ways to get the same look. I put the panel into my shoebox lid that I've lined with aluminum foil and I turned on my heat gun to heat up. The lid means I don't have to hold on to the panel and that helps save my fingers from the risk of burning. And I think the heat reflects back from the foil and helps to reduce warping and speed up melting time. Now I also want some white snowmen in my scene, so I'll stamp and mask them before the ink blending. They're from last year's Snowbud set, and to use one stamp to make them different heights, I stamped the first one off the bottom edge of my panel, and then I created a mask. Dum dum dum. <laughs> I should have followed my own advice and created more than one mask here. It's so easy to do more than one at a time. You can always keep any extras you have with the stamps for future projects and I actually needed two for this one. It's not a fatal mistake, but I do like to try and be a little more efficient than I was for this card. Anyway, I masked the first snowman, then I moved the stamp, and I stamped the second one and masked him as well. The shorter snowman will look like he's in front of the taller one when I pull off all the masks later on. But wait, there's more! Masking, I mean. I decided that I needed a little snow hill action behind the snowman, so I grabbed one of the landscape's dies and I cut it along a strip of 2 inch post-it tape. This way I have both sides, which I'll need. I laid down the top portion so that I could blend blue ink onto my snow. Yes, blue. Catherine Pooler, it's a boy, to be exact. Because it's night, the snow will not be completely white. Even knowing this, I freaked out a little at how blue it was at this point. But you'll see as I add more color, it will make more sense as part of this night scene. Next, I took the bottom half of the tape, which will match up perfectly to my snow hills, and provide the horizon line for my night sky. You can see I got a little bit of the blue ink above the tape line, so I'll just make sure I cover that over with the hot tub ink I'll be using next. I'm using hot tub, orange peel, and sangria inks, which are some of the newest Catherine Pooler inks, released just a couple of weeks ago. And while they are all gorgeous colors on their own, wait until you see how they blend. I'm using my life-changing blender brushes, and the ink is going on smoothly, but this ink does smooth out even more as it dries. And you can see my clear embossed sentiment starting to make an appearance as the ink goes on over top of it. I brought the hot tub up high enough to cover the blue, and then I moved on to orange peel. This is where the magic of the night sky comes from. This color just glows when it's blended like this. It's warm and it looks like a sunset or a sunrise. I just love it. And my next color is Sangria, which is probably my favorite of the four new colors. It's rich and not quite red and not quite purple. It's a perfect transition in this blend. And finally, I used Queen for a Day, which is a very deep bluey purple. At this point, I started worrying about smudging my blending with my inky fingers, so I grabbed some paper to rest my hand on. I did my ink blending on this metal Make Art Station. Because it's non-porous, the excess ink sits on top, and you do have to be careful not to pick it up with your fingers. But it's easy to clean and dry. Before I moved on, I grabbed a clean paper towel, and I buffed off any ink that was sitting on top of my embossed sentiment, so that it will look bright white. Speaking of bright white, that snow isn't looking so blue anymore, is it? Everything's relative, and compared to the dark night sky, I think it's about the right shade for nighttime snow. Okay, so now I'm moving on to the interactive portion of the card. Well, at least the image that will be the interactive element of the card. As soon as I saw this Zeppelin, I had a fun idea for making it a bit 3D, and I'll show you how I did it. I used my Misty, and I stamped it with Gina K. Barely There ink. This ink is great for no-line coloring, and it's so light I can barely see it on my cardstock unless I stamp it twice. 
So I did. Then I turned the panel and I stamped it again, twice. I'll just need a portion of the second Zeppelin to make my 3D element. I'm leaving the stamp exactly where it is on that misty door so that I can come back later and emboss these images. I just don't want to damage my Copic tips or my embossed lines by coloring after I emboss. So now on to some Copic coloring. I color on a pad of recycled newsprint. It's good to have something absorbent underneath your coloring. I started with yellow to put a warm glow in the windows of the gondola area of the Zeppelin. I'm imagining that this Zeppelin has a very special passenger, Santa, and he's cruising the night sky delivering presents. I wonder if a Zeppelin might maybe move too slowly for overnight toy delivery, but my son assures me it's probably faster than a sleigh, so I'm going with it. I colored the rest of the gondola with warm grays, and then I moved on to the main portion or the envelope. Hey, I didn't know Zeppelin part names either. I just Googled it. I wanted alternating red and white stripes, and I needed to keep track because this is where I'm going to make use of that second image to create the 3D portion. I used three reds to create some dimension by using darker shades at each end and along the area where it changes to white. At this point, I left the white stripes white, but I'll come back and change that a bit later. I moved on to the fins and I used three shades of festive green to create dimension again. This time I used the darker shades in the center and I left the lighter areas on the top and bottom edges. When I finished the coloring, I put the panel back into my mini Misty and I ran all over it with my anti-static pouch. I pulled out my wow embossing ink again and I stamped both images. Because I didn't move the stamp, it's going to line up perfectly with both colored images, even when I turn the panel, since that's where the stamp was the first time. Then I sprinkled metallic gold sparkle powder over top and I heated it with my heat gun. This powder is perfect for the outlines of my festive Zeppelin. It gives a very magical feeling. Here, you can see the sparkle and you'll know exactly what I mean. I used the coordinating die and I ran them through my Gemini Junior, and now I'm just going to cut out the two stripes from the center of that second Zeppelin. I used sharp scissors and I cut right along the lines so there's no white outline. It was pretty easy since the lines are smooth and they come to a point on both ends. To add the dimension, I used my score buddy to create a fold line down the center of this piece. Normally I would score on the front, but I didn't want to do that since I might impact the embossing powder, so I estimated where to score on the back, even though I folded it the opposite way. Once I laid it down, you can see how it's going to work to add a subtle 3D effect. But before that, I got out some cool gray markers to color in those stark white stripes. I was careful not to go too close to the embossed lines, since the embossing was a bit chunky due to the sparkly glitter in it, and it might damage my marker tips. I used quite a bit of gray on these, but remember how the blue snow ended up looking all right because it's a night scene. Same thing here. And I colored underneath the top stripe, just in case it turns out that the white area was visible at all. I probably didn't need to do that. I realized I hadn't colored the propeller, so I finished that, and then I got out my Nouveau Deluxe adhesive, and I ran a bead of that down the center line of the fully colored Zeppelin. As I said, the embossing powder is not smooth, so this liquid glue will get into the nooks and crannies and hold the 3D portion firmly. I love how it looks. It's a little more subtle than I had first envisioned, but that's okay. It means it will fit more easily into an envelope. Now I'm finally getting to the interactive portion, which will make the Zeppelin fly through the sky. But wait, there's more. I cut a negative mask from some masking paper using one of the cloud dies that came with the set and I used some Hero Arts Unicorn White Ink and a sponge dauber to add clouds. Because of the size of the Zeppelin image and the fact that it was going to move, I really didn't have a lot of room for clouds, and in the end I wonder if I should have done any at all, since I always think of Christmas Eve as being clear, but I did learn that this is a great way to add a subtle layer over top of ink blending to get a cloudy look. I chose one of the interactive dies from the Swing and Slide set, and I used my Gemini Junior to cut it out from the sky. Oops, and then I got distracted by those stark white snowmen. I started by stamping some faces. This set comes with a variety of hilarious facial expressions. I chose a winking face for the taller snowman and a surprised face for the shorter one, almost like the kid is overwhelmed to see Santa in the night sky. I stamped his arms so that it looks like he's putting his hands over his mouth in surprise. Then I colored them. 
I chose a darker shade of orange for their carrot noses, and then I used BG70 and 72 to create lots of shading on their white bodies so that they more closely match the snow. Then I added some pink cheeks to both of them. I thought they were too bright, so I softened them out with a colorless blender. Okay, back to the interactive part of this card. I grabbed a very long strip of foam tape. I have it placed over my Archon camera mount, just in front of where I work, so I can easily spool off as much as I need. And this time I needed quite a bit. I'm going to triple it up to give plenty of room for the slider mechanism to work. I started by doubling up about two thirds of it, and then I removed the release paper and put the rest over top. Now this is pretty thick and also pretty stiff, and when I put it on the back of my panel, I need to be sure to leave lots of room for the mechanism to move from one end to the other. So I trimmed it down to make narrower strips, and I placed it all over the back so that the whole panel will be really well supported. Before I went any further, I used some anti-static powder on the edges of the foam tape to deactivate the stickiness, just so that the movement doesn't get stuck anywhere. I tried using stacked up circles of cardstock as the back portion of this mechanism, but in the end it just wasn't heavy enough, so I used a nickel. I cut a very narrow strip of the tripled up foam tape and I curved it a bit so that it kind of matches the curve of the slider cutout, and I put it onto the nickel. I placed the nickel down on my work surface with the foam tape face up, and then I put the panel over top so that the tape could stick through the slider cutout. Then I pressed the zeppelin down onto the tape. As a final finishing touch, I blended more sangria ink right onto my white card base so that when the zeppelin moves, it will still look like sky. You could mask off the edges of your card base to be sure not to go too far, but I just focused my blending in the center of the panel and I tested it a couple of times before finally removing the release tape from the panel and pressing the whole thing down. I'm not sure if Santa knows that he has an audience as he's moving through the night sky in his magical zeppelin, but I think these guys add some real personality to this card. And those golden sparkly edges really add to the festive feeling of the card too. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe to this channel for more inspiration. Product links are below in the description and also on the blog. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.